Okay, so now let's get into the buck vocalizations and the different grunts, pops, clicks, tending grunts, breeding grunts, growls, roars, whatever you want to call it. Those different types of things. So on your extinguisher, obviously you're going to just slide it right down to the buck position. Now the extinguisher is designed not to be overly aggressive. It will mimic a, an adult buck, but we're not trying to be too loud and we're not trying to be too depth and too aggressive at this point. We're trying to just communicate as almost like kind of a, a subpar buck. So that if you're challenging someone and you're trying to communicate with them in an aggressive manner, they're not intimidated by it. You don't want to intimidate another buck. If you do that, well, obviously he's not going to come in. So with that being said, the contact grunt is just probably the most used thing of, of any kind of language when it comes to buck vocalization. And it's very simple. It's just, okay, I'm actually choking the call down. And this is where your chambering comes in big and your, your air control comes in big. The more volume that you can create in your throat and in your mouth, when you're starting to get the air pressure to come through, you're almost kind of like opening up the area in your, in your throat and your, in your mouth, and you're creating a big, biggest chamber that you can possibly get on the call, and you're kind of squeezing that down, that gets you that deeper sound. So, you see how I'm dropping my jaw and I'm kind of opening things up here a little bit and I'm just kind of breathing right down and using my uh, diaphragm and breathing down more deeper in my throat, kind of controlling the air down there. I got a deep chamber, I'm squeezed off really tight on the end and I'm just barely running that air through there. That's a good deep sound, okay? If you put heavier air pressure in, you don't choke down as much and you don't have the chamber and you have less volume area in your mouth, it's gonna sound like this. You see the pitch variation? I didn't change anything. All I did was change my hand positioning, my choking, the depth of the cup, and the depth of where the air was coming from with my throat to get the different variations of the buck grunt. So that's the good starting point for a buck grunt. And now, uh, once again, we'll just do that initial buck grunt, okay? It's really short, okay? It's precise, it's clear. I'm starting deep tone and I'm opening. Think back about the bleats, how they're short, they're concise, and they're just saying, hey, kind of locating, this is where I'm at, this is a buck. Well, it's, it's a contact grunt is what it is, okay? Now, the next buck grunt that we're gonna go over, it would be what we would call kind of a trailing grunt, or uh, there's pops and there's clicks that are going on. And these are just subtle noises that a deer will make when they're kind of running around in the timber. Maybe they're following a doe, something like that. And they're kind of, as they're walking, they're kind of worked up emotional. They're breathing and they're kind of going, uh, 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 pop. And they'll do like a little pop, 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 clicks and things like that. So I'm gonna do a little bit of variation of that. So these are just really short. And just think about a deer doing that as he's stepping down and kind of making a, uh, kind of a grunt little noise, so it's. Remember, that deer's walking, kind of trotting, looking for that doe or trailing that doe or whatever it is, that would be a trailing grunt, okay? And they'll do what we call pops and clicks and they're just, all I do to make this sound is just, I make like a little T sound, it's kind of a, Just making a T sound, you can change the variation of that. Notice you're always seeing me change direction on the call. 
And I do that for a reason, is because if you're pointing, deer have ears that are like little radars. So if you're pointing a call directly at a deer, they can pinpoint your exact location. The very, the worst thing that you can do is to call at a deer that you can see that has a visual sight on you directly at them because they will pinpoint exactly where that sound's coming from. So keep that in mind when you're calling. Change your variations a little bit, make sure you're changing. I was thinking in my mind that deer is coming across the trail. So I'm changing the tone and going behind me. So a deer can't pinpoint me and it creates the illusion of an actual deer on the ground doing that, okay? So those were trailing grunts, pops, clicks. It's probably a pre-rut situation um, where the deer are chasing, they're cruising, they're, they're getting revved up. They're very agitated. They're mad at each other. There's lots of things you can do when it comes to communicating during that time of the year, during that pre-rut. You wanna pretend like you're a different buck to really upset the older buck. That's a really good thing to do. Throw a doe bleed in there, an estrus bleed. Oh man, there's a, an estrus doe in there and now there's a, a, a buck chasing. I'm gonna get over there and see what's going on because that's my territory. So just think that way when it comes to communicating. Now let's get into more of the breeding grunt. That's when the, the buck is actually on the doe. He's tending her. Um, there's things going on. I mean, it's happening, okay? And that's just a long, drawn out. It can be up to eight, nine, 10, 12 seconds. I mean, it's, it's very long, but it can be as short as two or three or four or five seconds as well. But it's kind of a, a long grunt. We'll start it out once again, low choked off and just bring up the air and then come back down with it. So they're not just going, Rawr. they're going, Rawr. and then they're closing their mouth and it's coming down, okay? And it sounds like this. Okay, that's a pretty good long, elongated, drawn out grunt. Okay, and I bring it back down, so that's saying something, okay? And it can go even longer than that. Notice I picked up the volume. I really was yelling it out there, and coming back down, okay? And that's, normally that's a much more mature buck, okay? And normally that's a buck that's right on tending a doe. Some other things that can happen from that variation when they're in that state of mind, they're extremely ready to breed. They're on the doe that's ready to breed. There's a lot of emotion going on. They're doing sounds like this, but some other things that can happen then too is because they're so agitated, Remember, every other buck in that area can smell her too. They're agitated at, at the other bucks. So it's, it's, I think it's as, as much warning other bucks as it is letting the doe know it's I'm ready right now. This is a scenario I ran into, and unfortunately I didn't have a camera, but the buck did these different sounds that we're talking about, the long breeding grunt, he was doing some tending, trailing grunts, pops, clicks, all that stuff and he did the growl and the roar as well. So I'm gonna give you a, a, that piece of language, show you how to do it, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I saw so that you can understand how possibly to communicate using these tools. Now the growl or roar, whatever you wanna call it, it's you're, you're really blowing out the call. It's basically a buck grunt and you're choking way down. And all you're doing is just blowing out the sound of the call to a point where you're doing this. Now you'll notice the call quit working when I put heavy air pressure on. So that's where you have to learn how to control the back pressure. I have to take back pressure off as I'm blowing through the call with heavy pressure. And this is what's gonna happen. Now if I do that same air volume by keeping the call choked off, the call locks up, okay? This is not an easy call to learn how to do on the call, okay, on, on the extinguisher. You have to practice this, and it's super loud. 
Okay, so the last thing you want to do is like blow it out in the middle of the timber way up in the sky and let it echo through the whole valley 500,000 yards away, okay? Control where you want that to go and make it precise, make it controlled and make it sound. Or you can put it in with a grunt. Once again, breeding grunt. Throw some grunts in behind it. You've probably never heard it in the timber, okay? I had never heard it in the timber before either, but what happened was, is I, I seen an older buck. He was probably four and a half, five years old, something like that. He was literally on the doe, tending her. She was okay with it. They were traveling together and I seen him and I'm like, well, there's no way I'm gonna get him over here. He's on the doe. So my only thought was, let's create competition. We're in an area where bucks are cruising a ridge. I'm gonna create competition, see if I can get him worked up enough and try not to freak the doe out too much. So I started out with just doing some, you know, more breeding grunts or buck grunts, letting them know where I was. <laughs> Things like that. I saw an immediate response from that buck. He was warning me off. He started doing the long breeding grunt, okay? Now, that's the first time I've heard it. And it was like, whoa, that long was. So then I mimicked him back. He did it again. Then I did one of those roar type sounds. I went, Rah! and he did that again, Rah! right back at me. So what happened was the doe started to kind of fade off. She laid down in some bushes. He went up right behind her. He knew there was competition and he's getting up trying to nudge her. And he's trying to nudge her to get her up and start walking. And he got so frustrated, he started doing these growl sounds, Rah! Rah! trying to get her going and doing the long breeding grunts. And so that's the first time I really ever heard it and seen it used by an actual real deer out in a hunting scenario. Now, what really freaked me out about this wasn't so much that I heard it for the first time, but we called in between him and I, we called in five other bucks came running into this scenario. Now they were smaller bucks. They knew that he was a, a, too big of a match for him. So they didn't actually come in to try and compete or fight with him. But it was amazing how all the deer in the area that could hear that came running in and just, then they kind of tried to stand each other off. A few of them sparred and got mad at each other and started talking back and forth with each other. So, you know, Rod White um, gave me a little tip on doing these breeding grunts. And it all came from a buck he called the croaker. And so we kind of call it croaking. But what he'll do in this variation is he'll add a distortion at the front end of, of the breeding grunt. And what he's doing is he's actually kind of flickering his tongue. He's doing that kind of sound. And it's a real distorted, aggressive croaking, we called it. And it's that long, elongated breeding grunt. And it sounds a little bit like this. You're going to have to take a deep breath when you're doing it. You hear that distortion, that deep gurgling kind of sound? It's something you can practice. You know, there's no exact set way to do it, but that's the way Rod does it. We call that croaking. And I thought he was crazy until actually we filmed it live on video, that buck going back and forth with him, making that noise. And it was some of the most amazing verbalization I've ever heard in the timber by a deer. So when it comes to communicating with deer, you have to learn how to control your call. You need to learn the basics of the vocabulary of the different deer from fawns to does to bucks. And then you can take it to a whole nother level. There's an unlimited amount of ways to actually communicate with just those few little vocalizations. And the scenarios are gonna change from time to time to time. And that's where the Deer Society comes in. We have lots of different categories and different experiences and different things and ways that you can learn to communicate on much further advanced levels. And we keep learning more. Deer keep changing and things keep changing. And so 
This is a lifetime asset that you can use by having your Deer Society free app or joining the YouTube channel for Deer Society. And it's ways that you're gonna become a, a, a much more proficient caller and you're gonna become way more successful when it comes to your sport.